Good evening, folks. Well, hi, Cat. Thanks for sitting on me. The true star of the show. You want to say hi to the internet people? Say hi, internet peoples. Exactly. That sense of accomplishment. That's what makes it such a good game. When you do something in this game and you finish it, I don't, I don't care what it is, whether you're, you're doing a quest at level 10 or doing a quest you know, on here at level 60, it feels like you've done something. Except for, you know, like the newbie quest, of course. You know, take the muffins over to Deputy Toe Jam. Deputy Toe Jam is the shit. And his cousin Earl. Remember that game? Toe Jam and Earl? A lot of fun on that game. Too much fun, probably. I know, my Aunt Tony already decorated. Talking about people already decorating for, uh, G uh Christmas. God, couldn't think of the name of it. I know, Rowan. I know. I know. And she was like bragging about it. I was the first in my neighborhood to have Christmas decorations up. Well, congratulations, November 1st, you have your Christmas decorations up. And this is why nobody likes you. Shh, I'm not helping my argument. Nobody likes her. My aunt, don't, not you. <laughs> my aunt. She's a very unpleasant individual. What'd you think, Dolo? There's really only one episode that I was uh, referring to, the one that explains um, the uh, Federal Reserve U.S. Um, Treasury relationship, how they, you know, issue the bonds and then the Federal Reserve buys the bonds, and basically using a blank check, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I liked the most about it. It was, it was so easy to get your mind around it. Um, very, very good explanation. Thorough, yet easily understood. Oh. Can you see this? That's me and my mother. Back in 1969. That's how old this picture is. Coffee. Always coffee. Always, always, always coffee. Colombian medium roast coffee. Black, no sugar. I know. I know. I've shown this to you, some of you already. See the lion's face in the tree. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what's life without a little adventure, you yeah. know, and alimony and child support. And he will be paying for that for the rest of his life. You can't fight it. No lawyer will get you out of it. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. You've known it for 25 years, <laughs> believe me. 
There's a damn thing you can do about it. When the girlfriend turned 21, um, we tried to do the whole drinking thing. Um, you know, celebrate her birthday and that kind of thing. We were just not, not equipped for it. <laughs> My hangovers last days. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, kind of why I stopped smoking weed. Wasn't getting anything done. Oh yeah, I, I don't have to take. I don't have to worry about drug tests anymore because I'm not working for somebody else. And... I found out I was just sitting around stoned all the time, so I just quit that too. <laughs> this is nice. I like this. Not working too hard. Getting some good cash drops. My uncle got nabbed with, for a DUI on a bike. Um, to the point where they were going to throw him in jail. He, had, he ended up moving to Connecticut for a few years just to get away from it. But then he came back and got it all cleared up. And, but yeah, that, that screwed his life up for a while. On a bike. Well, you find other escapes. Or other things to focus on. Distractions. But now I don't have time. I don't have time to get bored. I do this anywhere from what, six to six to nine hours a day, and then between that, I'm all editing videos and you know the family and. The, yeah, and all the other stuff that I do, I, I just I don't have time to get bored anymore. In fact, I don't have enough time now. Yeah, riding's good. It clears your head, gives you all that that personal space. It's one one thing I liked about it the most, just going on those long rides all by yourself. Every week, I used to do a thirty mile ride from up over the uh, up over the mountain, down this little podunk town out in the middle of nowhere, and then back just for that clear time I miss riding I really do I miss riding kind of got out of it when I moved to Florida there's no no good trails down there the Everglades who wants to ride in the freaking Everglades I could I just have to take it real easy I, my knees were kind of shot from uh, from riding Mountain bike. Mountain biking is real hard on your knees. Much more so than uh, road bikes. Yeah. I might get another one. Just put, putter around town with more than anything. But the problem is I don't putter. Every time I hop on a freaking bike, I start riding like a maniac. Can't help it. Can't help it. Can't ride slow. Get on, get on there. And I just, I just want to go. <laughs> I want to spend as little time on the ground as possible, you know what I mean? Uh, do, you, do you ride mountain bikes or road bikes? I forget. Oh, okay. That's what I started on. Bef uh, I started riding before mountain biking was a thing when, uh, you know, when the guys were just putting big fat tires on mountain uh, road bikes and riding them down the sides of mountains. Oh, one time we went that trail I told you about that switchback goes down the side of the mountain over across the river um, it was like a record run this day we were just hauling ass down the side of the mountain um, I was actually getting some air that I probably shouldn't have been doing that day but we, it was just that kind of day what was I saying oh down this trail nobody got hurt we made it down just fine it was a perfect ride textbook then we got home, decided to run over to the uh, store real quick to um, grab something to drink. And my buddy and I both at the same time were riding through this driveway. 
and our front wheels hit a ditch at the same time that you couldn't see because the grass had grown up, and we both went up over the bars. <laughs> it was hilarious. All the people that were sitting outside eating their Big Macs over at McDonald's were laughing their asses off at us. I took my brother-in-law, former brother-in-law, for a ride one time. Cause he, you know, he, I got me this really expensive mountain bike, so I'm a good rider. You know, one of those. And um, and we were just doing a town jam. You know, we weren't doing anything crazy. But um, there's a lot of little wooded areas tucked around town because it's a semi-rural. It's a city, but not really. Um, and uh, there's this uh, dike system that goes along the river to keep the floods at bay. Uh, and then between the dike and the river, there's all these little wooded patches. And people have made trails down through them. And we came down off the, the dike, and there's a really sharp turn into the trails. Um, I forgot to tell him about it. And uh, he panicked and slammed on his brakes, going downhill, launched right over the bars, lawn darted right into the side of the bank, boom, left this big circular dent. Thank God he was wearing a helmet. Left this big circular dent in the side of the bank. Funny. Oh, it was funny. Didn't like him that much, but you know, I was trying to make my sister happy. The uh, was it Donna Brazil and uh, Elizabeth Warren are starting to uh, turn on Hillary now. Now it looks like the jigs up for old Hill Dog. Told you, feeds on itself. Feeds on itself. You can't do business with people like that because the minute, the, the minute things look bad, they'll stab you in the back. They're all, and then I guarantee you Bernie's going to come out and uh, say that they you know, offered him a payout or something like that. He's not going to admit to actually having taken it, of course. But <laughs> he's going to say they offered. You're going to start seeing a lot of distance between her and uh, the established Dems. It's going to keep feeding. Yeah. yeah I know. There's too many, I think um, what's holding him in check is there's too many people watching him, making sure he doesn't screw up. He did. He did, BG. He most certainly did. It's a big old $600,000 house. Not bad for somebody who has who is dirt poor. <laughs> Not bad for a socialist. It will eventually, Dolo. It's uh, shifts one way, shifts the other. Uh, but it's it's not going to unless you know people make it that way. And uh, we keep voting for these idiots. We keep voting, putting them right back into office again. I mean, that's a conversation we had before uh, Congress. Everybody pays attention to the president. Nobody pays attention to Congress. Everybody just votes along party lines when it comes to Congress. They don't actually look at who it is that they're voting for. It's only the big office, the White House, the one with the least amount of power. He's a good scapegoat. It's his fault. He's president. It's his fault. I'm just a lowly congressman. Yeah, <laughs> was, Al Gore is my favorite. Uh, um, he bought like this $14 million seaside house, um, you know, after claiming that all the ocean levels were going to rise and country, uh, everybody was going to drown from these, uh, you know, melting ice caps and whatnot. And then he buys a house right on the ocean, $14 million. A lot of money in environmentalism. I think Obama was a little more dangerous, um, but not not because he himself was dangerous. Just the people that were God. I hate saying things like that because then you sound like one of those tinfoil hat people. But the people that were p pulling his strings are more dangerous because um, he came from he came from nowhere. Completely, he was he served a half a term as a uh, junior senator, and then he went right right into the White House. 
Whatever. Yeah. He's gone now. He's a non-factor now. Him and his husband. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But again, I don't think it was him in particular. I think it was uh, the people funding him. I actually think Michelle's more dangerous than Barack. She's definitely stronger. <laughs> She's definitely got a bigger dick. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. And that's what it is. He was involved with a lot of these organizations. And they're the ones that pay for it. And if he wants to continue to receive those checks, um, then he's got to continue to do what they want him to do. But, you know, again, that's all old news. we got a whole new batch of criminals to play with now. And all that shit that Hillary's been doing for all those years. Her and Slick Willie. And I think it's more her than him, because he's not that smart. Hillary's obviously the smart one in that, that pairing, that duo. Well, yeah, Bill does have charisma. So does Barack. Barack had charisma. But that's all they have. Michelle's the schemer. Michelle's the conniver. In that, in that duo. You can see it. You can see it in her eyes. She's got that look that she's always checking people out, always measuring people up. And, uh, where he's just, you know, he's a cuck. <laughs> Barack's a cuck. Let's face it. Same with Bill. Bill was a cuck. She, she spent a lot of time covering up for him, and uh, she wouldn't have half the problems she did if it wasn't for the fact that he's always getting his, himself in trouble. He can't keep his hands to himself. He can't stop raping people. <laughs> not, a good, not a good qualification for the president, you know what I mean? But this is bigger than just politics. It's, a, it's an actual social thing. Societal thing, not a social thing. A societal thing. Breaking down of the society, breaking down of the core, core beliefs. The Communist Party uh, and their their influence in the United States, and and then how they started infiltrating the United States with the uh, the feminist movement and whatnot, and the um, the the civil rights movement and all that. Divide and conquer, divide and conquer. Keep everybody fighting everybody else. Nobody focuses on anything else. <laughs>